What is up guys, my name's Mitch and this is Tiffany the San Remo Cube. That's right, I named my coffee machine because I can. And I love this thing. Um, I love it so much that I actually had some beanies made up to pay homage to Tiffany, and she's awesome. Um, you can't have these because they were a very limited edition run and they sold out overnight. Um, if you are interested in the next special item to come out, you need to follow us on Instagram right now. It's written on the hoodie, just type that in, it'll pop up. Um, because the next one's pretty cool, um, especially if you're into Italian things. It's all the hint you're getting. If you are also interested in some of our merchandise, you can purchase these hoodies and a very similar t-shirt off the website as well. Um, and I actually drew this design myself. Um, I'm quite proud of it. I think it's pretty cool. It's really, really cool to see it on something and all around the streets. It's been really cool. But we're not talking about all that today. Uh, we are going to be talking about the cube and one of the best mods you can do to this machine. It's already in the caption, so you know what I'm going to talk about. And let's get stuck into the video. Two things I need to apologize for already. Number one is uh, saying the word video while the voice command is turned on. I'll turn that off, that's why the video just stopped. Bloody GoPro. Um, secondly is my Hero 10 has died, which has better audio than the Hero 5. Um, so the audio is a bit average, I know. Um, I don't have an external microphone because I don't have an external microphone. Um, if it's that much of an issue, send me one. Everyone keeps commenting on how bad the audio is. Fix it. Stop making it my problem. I make coffee, not videos. Well, I'm better at this than that, let's say. Let's get stuck into the video. So if you've read the caption, uh, you'd be aware that we are talking about what I think is the best modification. Let's say it's a modification because no one, well, not enough people seem to do it in my opinion. Um, I think this is a very important thing to do and it's not expensive and it doesn't void warranty on any machine, um, especially if it's designed to do this. Um, what we're talking about is plumbing in your coffee machine. Um, so no more water tank, no more emptying drip trays, plumb the thing in, have a drip uh, to the drain and you just turn the machine on especially when you've got a machine like this which is controlled from apps so you're laying in bed turn the bad boy on go and have a shower come out and you're not surprised by an empty water tank because oh, that sucks <laughs> so that doesn't happen to me anymore because i've moved house and i finally plumbed in the machine it is on a temporary bench at the moment because we're working on something pretty special i'm going to run you through a few of the things you need to purchase to do this um, if you're not extremely handy, this is probably not something you should do yourself um, because it involves cutting holes and things that, you know, maybe not everyone should do. I did it myself. I've plumbed in many machines before um, and these are quite simple and the San Remo comes with one of the hoses and a couple, and the drain hose as well that you need. So I'm going to run you through everything else you need to purchase if you have bought a San Remo cube specifically. Now, a filtration system is step one after deciding that you do want to plumb in your machine. Um, filtration is key. If you don't have good water going to your machine, you're not gonna have good coffee coming out of the machine and you're gonna damage it. So please look into doing the correct filtration system. Um, depending on how nerdy you wanna get, um, I went way too far and I've actually put in a very large system. But what I've done is I would test the water simply out of the tap or wherever that source is going to come from and then work out the minerals you need to add, remove, etc. Simply, the most important thing is a scale inhibitor built into the filtration system um, because we don't want to damage the machine. Um, you can have a couple of bad coffees, whatever, it's not the end of the world. However, destroying your beautiful machine um, can be the end of the world for some, so don't do that. Put a good filter in. 
Um, with this machine, we're very lucky it comes with most of what you need. Um, I just had to purchase one line that went from the filter to the water source and a couple of little adapters um, because Australian size is not exactly what this guy was supplied with. Not a big deal. Super simple. Um, other than that, that's it. Good filtration system and then we can start plumbing it in. Now, I'm going to dive deeper into why you would want to do this um, in just a moment. So in my old house, this machine wasn't plumbed in simply because I knew I was moving house. Um, so when I was doing a mechanical pre-infusion that this machine lets you do, uh, it was simply just letting water flow from the water tank into the group head and essentially just wetting the coffee puck, um, not with any pressure behind it. But now I have got a pressure regulator in line. Um, this is something I would recommend, you don't have to do it. But it allows me to adjust my pre-infusion. So now I've got my pre-infusion set at one and a half bar. So it's actually forcing water into that coffee at one and a half bar of pressure. Um, and then I can extract and the pump kicks in. I've actually got this set at a slightly lower pressure extraction as well. Um, I'm not going to go in how to do that because you'll probably void warranty of your machine. Um, I voided warranty of my machine, I'm okay with that. Um, I don't want to do that to anyone else and be held responsible. <laughs> so um, that in my opinion is the best modification purely for that reason. You can pre-infuse at an exact pressure. So if your tank is completely full, I've found that you're getting a little bit more pre-infusion rather than if it was sort of half full because obviously there's more pressure forcing it through, which makes it very hard to repeat coffees um, because it's not measurable unless your tank is full. Every coffee you make, if you're going to go to that effort, plumb the bloody thing in. Simple. Um, I am going to make a coffee um, and I'm going to show you a couple of little things along the way with pre-infusion pre to give you a bit of an insight into why it works better and what makes it taste better. So as you can see by no means is this a perfect espresso shot. A lot of channeling going on but this is simply just to show you an example of pre-infusion um, before you extract your shot. So that's created quite a nice espresso, uh, very creamy. Um, now the coffee I'm using is fairly light um, and it's still created quite a creamy espresso. Um, also, highly recommend crude espresso glasses. Beautiful and you don't have to stir them. Um, there will be video on that at some stage. I'm waiting on something to make that provable. I think that's a word. Um, that's delicious. Oh my god, that is incredible. Um, I'm not going to tell you what beans I'm using because they're top secret. Now, uh, the machine does also give you, being plumbed in, it does also give you the option to do post extraction. Give that a little flush, a little bit there, so I'm not knocking on camera. So, when you do your pre extraction at one and a half bar, run your extraction and then sneak your little post extraction. So you can drop back down to that one and a half bar again. You can experiment with flavours. Um, certain beans love it, some beans don't. That is a bit of a game changer. Grab yourself a filter, find yourself a good plumber, get your machine hooked up, and you can have the best coffee possible from your machine at home now. Um, Pre-extraction, big deal. Controllable extraction, and post-extraction. If you've ever played with a San Remo Opera or a machine similar, um, post extraction is pretty cool. You can get some insane flavours. Uh, if you've ever watched the video with Connor Does Coffee um, with the Breaking Bad Coffee series, um, his first video, we, well, he decided that we would do a 10 second post extraction. Uh, I can't remember what pressure it was, but it was a huge post extraction that I've never tried before because it was silly. It seemed like it wouldn't achieve anything great, but it did. 
Um, we actually got an insanely citrusy coffee, which I would have never have found if um, we weren't experimenting that day. So play with your machine within the limits of not destroying things because I don't want that to happen to anyone. Um, and see what you can get out of it. Um, because by simply adding the system, well, the machine into a plumb system, it gave me a lot more control over it and lets me play with the machine a lot more. So give it a crack. Um, let me know what you think. Let me know if you've done it and had some good results as well. I'm really interested to hear. And like I said, if you want to jump on the merch bandwagon, go over to the website. There's a few left. Um, it does sell fairly quickly. I'm only getting small batches because it's a local guy making them and he's got more than one customer. So I've got to take it easy on him. Thanks so much for watching guys. Have yourselves a great day and happy brewing.